Okay, so in this video we are going to be working on central tendency and variability. Uh, and so let's just dive right in here. So let's say, for example, I have two distributions of exam scores, one from class A and one from class B. And I want to calculate some descriptive statistics for each and then maybe a weighted mean for both samples combined. And so let's start with mean for class A. If we want to calculate a mean, you might be tempted, like me, to just start by typing equal mean. That's not actually the formula that we'll use here. It's equal average. And so we'll go ahead and do that. Select our numbers. And there we have it. Uh, so median is easy. It's just equal median. Mode is also easy. It's just equal mode. Range, there's no formula for range. If we just type equal range. Um, but this one's easy. It's just the difference between the highest and the lowest. And so let's just do that one manually. So the highest, B2 minus the lowest, B23, and then 33. Sample variance is equal VAR. So let's go and highlight and do that. And standard deviation is STDEV. for the sample. Okay, and so let's say that I've done this and uh, for whatever reason I'm paranoid that my variance and standard deviation didn't calculate right. I wanted to show you how to do that by hand really quickly in here um, to one, double check our work and prove that this is correct and then also two, to show you some other cool features in Excel um, that I've used in a lot of different approaches uh, or tasks. So let's go ahead and hide these real quick. And I'm just gonna copy these over here for the sake of this example. So if you recall, when we were calculating variance, we had these tables. Let me go and pull that up. So first off, we have a formula. If you need to refresh, go ahead and pause here. Uh, and then we had this table that we used to calculate it by hand. And so we have the score, mean, the deviation, and the square. Let's go ahead and make those columns up here. So mean, uh, deviation, and square. And so if we go back to our formula for populate, or where is it, sample variance, right? So we have the sum of squares divided by sample size minus one. So in this case, we need to start by building our sum of squares. So first we know the mean is 79.3. Oh, and on that note too, I have this set to um, show less decimal points. So if you did this manually, it would probably show like something like this. Um, I, yeah, this is a second take of this video because the first one I rambled for far too long. So I'm trying to be briefer here. Um, but in this case, uh, if you have something like this and you want to shorten the decimal places, just simply click this, this X delete decimal place. And then it's going to continue rounding as we go. So for example here, 0.27 is going to become 0.3 because it rounded it for us. All right, so um, so that's why it looks a little bit different. Um, but let's go ahead and do this. If we click and drag, uh-oh, Excel is doing something we don't want it to do. We want the mean to be consistent throughout as we're building this table. But it thinks that we should be adding one as we proceed through the cells. And so whenever we click and drag, like this, Excel or LibreOffice, whatever, the, the program is picking up on whatever pattern it seems to identify in the data. And so in this case, since we only have one number, it can't tell what the pattern is. So let's go ahead and repeat 79.3 and then highlight both sections or both cells and then drag. And now it understands the pattern because it's like, oh, you have this twice in a row, therefore you must want to repeat it. That's the pattern. Right, the sentient Excel program, something like that. Okay, so we have our classes or our scores, our mean, our deviation, which equals this minus this. All right, so we have G2 minus H2. Um, whoops, I don't want to be here. If this ever happens to you and you're stuck in a formula, and so when you click around, it's like adding stuff. Click, uh, I'm on a PC, but for me, I click the escape key and then it, it frees me from that. 
Um, so pro tip there. Um, but let's go ahead and click and drag and double check somewhere down here. So if we look at our formula, okay, it seems to have worked correctly because it's taking G15 minus H15. Okay, so the deviations look good. Let's do squares, which is simply this I2 squared. That caret symbol here means to the power of, so in this case, squared is to the power of two, a number times itself. Now, if we wanted to cube it, a number times itself times itself, we would do to the power of four caret three, so on and so forth. All right, so in this case, it's that number squared. Let's click and drag. So now we have all of these values. Let's double check one. Yep, it's squaring that number. This looks good. So now we need to sum our squares. So this equals sum of this whole array. Okay. And then next we need uh, n minus one. So our denominator. And what is our n? It is, tell you what, let's go ahead and calculate that by hand. So let's go ahead and see how many we have here. How many rows? We have 22. So we could do equals 22 minus one equals 21. So let, and then let's calculate our variance. So that's gonna equal our numerator divided by the denominator. And what do you know? Let's go ahead and expand this to double check. Okay, so it's not a perfect match, but I think that's just because um, this number is slightly different than this number because this one's just rounded to 79.3. But when we go ahead and round in, so let's delete all our decimal points. Let's go down to two digits. Right, they're the same. And so practically, these are essentially the same number, right? There are very, very tiny differences as we go way down in the decimal points. But for the purposes of rounding, we have the an equivalent variance here. And standard deviation, you'll remember, is simply the square root of our variance. So let's do SQRT, square root of that number. Oops, I think I need to close the parentheses. Equal the square root, there you go, of this, close parenthesis. Now we have it, 9.5 and 9.5. Sweet, so we did it. Okay, so let's go and delete those. And let's unhide our cells. And let's go ahead and calculate our mean and whatnot over here. See, every time I type in mean equals average for these, I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, I went ahead and paused it and calculated these all. That way uh, I would spare you just sitting there listening to me <laughs> breathing into the microphone. <laughs> um, okay, so we have these, and say I, for whatever reason I wanted to calculate a weighted mean using um, or accounting for the different sample sizes here. Um, so we'll recall the formula for weighted mean. If I dig that up, it's the sum of each mean times the sample size divided by the total sample size, right? You can go back to this slide if you want a refresher. Um, so first I need to, let's, let's make another array here for the weighted mean. Um, so let's go ahead and do that up here. So uh, for that, what do we need? We need the uh, mean and sample size, and let's say class A and class B. Class A mean was, let's just say 79.3. Sample size was, let's highlight these. And I can see I've selected 22 rows. Everyone's accounted for, therefore it must be 22. So our sample size is 22. Class B mean is 88.7. And the sample size was, what was it? 20? Yeah, 20. Okay, so we can do this a couple different ways. So one thing we could do here uh, is let's multiply these. So we can do uh, 79.3 times 22. We can also do product. So it multiplies these two things. 
That's an alternative. All right, so we do that and then we can sum those. So equals sum of these two things. Another thing we could do, um, and so basically what we did there was we calculated the uh, denominator here, the sum of these individual means times their samples. And so we calculated the mean times their sample, mean times their sample, and then we added those up. We can also use something called sum product. Now you'll see, if, I'm not going to touch it, but if you read uh, this right here, uh, returns the sum of the products of array arguments. So that's what we want, right? That's exactly what our formula does. It sums a bunch of products. And so we'll see array one. Let's go ahead and select these two. Array two, select these two. Let's close our parentheses. And what happened here? Okay, I realized my mistake. Um, I misinterpreted these arrays. And so I was doing the rows, and actually the arrays are the columns that you'll be uh, multiplying and then adding those products. And so let's go ahead and backspace here and said the first array is the first column, second array is the second column close parentheses, and then bam. All right, and so that is the numerator for our equation, and we want to now divide by the total sample size, uh, which is 22 plus 20. Um, so here, let's do, uh, let's just label these some product, total sample size equals 22 plus 20. So then we have our weighted mean equals this divided by this. Then there we have our weighted mean, right? And so let's double check this. Let's just do a, um, this all is one formula. So we'll say equals, let's try it all out. So first we're gonna do our, let's do our numerator divided by the denominator. And so in our numerator, we're gonna say equals some product of, let's do our arrays. Okay, so there we have our numerator, it's the sum product of those. And then our denominator is the sum of these two. And let's see if that works. Yep, there you have it. And so all I did here was just show that you can do all this in one uh, equation line rather than breaking it up into steps. Um, a little more sophisticated and you really have to pay attention to details and your punctuation and everything the way you don't make any mistakes here. Um, but one way we can do it all in one line. Um, so I believe that's all I have here. Thanks for watching. As always, let your instructor know if you have any questions and we'll see you next time.